few brave ones out there that obviously have listened to me preach on the table of the Lord and the blood. Here's someone. Does God forgive our sins? I thought Jesus' blood raised our sins so the Father can't see them. If he doesn't see them, if they are erased, I guess forgiveness isn't necessary. Like you stated before, it's hard to comprehend concerning his omnipresence and all-knowing. That's true, but God being God, he could do anything he wants. Does God forgive our sins? With everything I've learned here, it would seem to me that the question needs clarification. No, it doesn't. Don't complicate it. God, meaning the God the Father, sees us through Christ's blood who washed away our sins as if they never existed, which Christ, God in human form, forgave through grace. So, th do I, so I think the answer is yes and no. Okay? Does God forgive our sins? What definition of forgive are we using? Neither one you put down here. Not sure what to say, except I know he doesn't cover them, but cast them from us. He does both, actually. No, God doesn't, and I use that illustration. Remember the illustration I used? I used the illustration. Well, I'll get to it in a minute. No, God doesn't, but through Jesus, he doesn't see the sin in us. Okay? There you go again. Asking a very basic question, something we've been told for a long, long time. Does God forgive our sins? Since we are covered by the blood of Christ, God no longer sees our sin. He sees Jesus. Our sins are washed away. I don't see a forgiving action there. I see a blotting action. Blotting out action. I feel like I always get the pop quizzes wrong, but here it goes. I think that Christ covered our sins rather than removed them. Nope, that's not what Scripture says. You need to go back and listen to some of those Table of the Lord messages where I point out the Scriptures so where it said it is removed. As our previous pastor puts it, he sees us through rose-colored glasses that Christ covered with his blood. I never really bought that either. Definition. God is the, doesn't need his vision blurred. From my sin. Because my sin's not there. He didn't, doesn't need my, his vision blurred with rose-colored glasses if my sin has been removed. Go back and listen to those Table of the Lord messages again. Sooner or later, maybe this HOF will be editing some of them. Where I make that distinction and where we find it in scriptures, the promises of removal of sin, not just covering. Remember I used the illustration? Back to this. Through Jesus, God forgives our sins and reconciles us to themselves. Remember I used the illustration? when I was preaching on those scriptures, and I said, it's almost like a magician, but not a magician, but just using a poor example, but just the closest thing I could find to it to explain what I'm trying to say. They put something underneath the drape or covering, cloth covering, and they're telling everybody it's going to disappear. Well, Jesus, Jesus Christ's blood is that covering. In the magician example here, my sins are underneath it. And when we lose that blood covering, guess what? Nothing's there. It has disappeared. And what has disappeared is not seen by the, by the Father, God the Father. 
God being God, could choose anything he wants to choose, including if his son, his only begotten son, was going to come and die for us and raise from that grave for us. He can choose, even though he's all-knowing, to not know concerning my sin or sins. And this is what I get so frustrated with. The one message that Satan, he's been successful in a lot of messages, a lot of topics, but one message that Satan has been really success, successful, doesn't matter what denomination, whether you're Protestant, Catholic, whatever, the one message he's been very successful in confusing and twisting is what Christ told us to remember. His sacrifice. And they keep proclaiming it. And as often as you eat and drink. It's a very simple message. But boy, has it been ever twisted. It's been all oh, so confused. God does not forgive our sin because he didn't see our sin. Well, how are you going to justify the disciples' prayer? Put that in context. If you're going to argue, make sure you know what you're arguing about. His disciples asking how they should pray. Jesus did not die and rose out of that grave yet, did he? And he says, when you do pray... say certain things and ask for certain things. And one of those things was, forgive us our trespasses. So there's where the confusion comes in. That and a few other verses. Well, we're supposed to ask God to forgive our trespasses. Well, didn't Jesus pay that price? Didn't Jesus say that we would trust and faith in him, have confidence what he would do at that scene at Calvary, be sufficient? Where sins are, as that one HOF said, are blotted away. They're gone. It's only Christians like to bring up your sins over and over and over again. They have to have something to hold over your head to keep you in line, to keep you in that self-righteous image that they've created. Jesus reconciled us back to the Father by going to Calvary. Stepping in where we deserve to be. Dying. Because of Adam's sin. And we're in the image of Adam. Christ and his grace, God and his grace, allows his only begotten son in human flesh to come to die to rise and present His blood at the heavenly mercy seat. Christ doesn't need rose-colored, I mean, God doesn't need rose-colored glasses. For what? He didn't need His vision blurred. There's nothing there to see, is what I'm saying. You know when you fight the, the good fight of faith harder than anything else that you ever face in your life? Preach that. It's the one message that Satan hates with a passion. Yes, he doesn't like 
the truth be told of the last days in eschatology. He doesn't like spiritual warfare and knowing your enemy, which he is. But the thing that he double or triple dislikes is the rightly divided word of God about what Christ did for us and what a wonderful benefit that is for us. Some of the pounds of my life the last few years, I'm convinced because I have really stirred up hell and its forces by exposing the true message of what Christ did for us. Without all the bondage, without all the, all the twisting, without all the colorful illustrations that doesn't get to the meat of the matter. God only has two choices. To see nothing that's not there because it's been removed by Christ, gone forever, or see the ones that have not put their trust and faith in His only begotten Son and just waiting for the day of his, for all things to be fulfilled where His wrath will pour out. And punishment and eternal punishment will come. Through Christ, Adam's sin, which we by affiliation, because we're in his image, have adopted when we were born, been removed. It's been removed. It's not seen by the Father. The Father cannot forgive what He cannot see, what He chose not to see, in honor of His Son. That blood at the mercy seat of heaven is a shield that blocks out all freaking, I'm not cussing, sin from the Father. Period. And like I said, the disciples' prayers was the prayer that they were supposed to pray prior to Christ's death and resurrection. Put it in context. Even though I taught on it, I don't pray the Our Father, which art in heaven prayer. Because there's things in it that only pertain to to individuals prior to Jesus going to the cross. After a cross, some things are totally eliminated. There's some things still a part of it that you can pray. But we don't have to pray any longer for the Father to forgive our trespasses that we forgive others. Now we are to forgive others. But the Father doesn't have to forgive us. He has that blood shield that keeps all sin away from him. For the fathers, for the ones that trust in him and his son, and what his son did for us. God being God sees all others and their sins. Ones that are in his son and his son are in them, he sees nothing. It doesn't give you a license to go do as much sinning as you can. And I'll get to that maybe next time. 
I didn't even get past two sentences in this uh, write-up that I was going to read to you. Our greatest need is Jesus Christ. Our greatest need is not the good news of the kingdom. The kingdom has already started to establish itself, but it's not complete. And it does not meet the greatest need in our lives. Jesus meets the greatest need in our lives. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, meets the greatest needs in our lives because that's the starting point in our journey that will continue when the kingdom is complete and we live on forevermore in Jesus' presence throughout eternity. Through Jesus, God forgives our sins? No. Because of Jesus, God does not see our sins. And what he can't see, no forgiveness is necessary. Or else what Christ did on the cross and coming out of the tomb meant nothing. Like I said, God's not up there with rose-colored glasses. I never agree with that. He doesn't need to be blinded from our sin because he can never see our sin. They've been removed. And because they're removed, through Christ, we can be reconciled back with him. Now, that's where I'll pick it up probably next Sunday. I didn't get very far. I was going to read you about three or four pages, and I got two sentences in. Play the song.